First Timothy 6, verse 6, but godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. Abraham, our father according to the flesh, found both great gain and contentment, all right? It's not that you can't have both. Right. It's what you desire and what you seek after, all right? What's the focus? Because God can, can bless you immensely in the world, right? right. right? Abraham breathed his last and died in a good old age, an old man and satisfied with life. He was gathered to his people. Genesis 25, 8. He was satisfied. He was content. I don't know how many people you know that are satisfied, that are content with that, with their, whatever their situation is, with their job, with their home, with anything. And the, the fact is, not very many. Most people are not satisfied. They're just they're discontent. So while the people in the world struggle to be content and find satisfaction, we are promised by the one who cannot lie mm -hmm. and never broke a promise. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Matthew 5, 6, at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, that's God's promise. You will find satisfaction. You will find contentment. And he went on in that Sermon on the Mount to also proclaim do not worry then saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but for your fa heavenly father knows that you need these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 31 and 33. He's going to take care of you. And that, gives you, that has to give you a piece that passes understanding. Which is why he said, you know, Paul wrote in Philippians, think about these words. Make them part of your life. Mm -hmm. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Right? Philippians 4, 6, and 7. You have the richest father. Mm. Okay? There was a movie we just saw, Mark was telling us about it, and we saw it, All the Money in the World, about J. Paul Getty. Mm -hmm. What a miserable life. What a miserable life. Mm. You have a father who has all the money in the world, has all everything and all. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. All of it belongs to God. And he is so generous that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, just for you, to meet your need. Check Romans 8.32 and look around there. So he goes on in the next verse, in verse 7, to say, If we have brought nothing into the world, mm -hmm. so we cannot take anything out of it either. Unlike R Egypt, where God brought the people out of, all right, mm -hmm. the religious but not godly world, they believe that you can indeed take it with you. What do you think all of the tombs are? Mm -hmm. are? I mean, everything was about, yeah. yeah, you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. You can send it ahead. Mm -hmm. Store up your treasures in heaven. Thank you so much. Okay, do not store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal. Matthew six nineteen and 20. Yeah. You can send it on ahead. And... You know, it's not it's not a matter of how much you have in your pocket. Maybe you have maybe you don't have anything in your pocket at the moment, but you got a lot of money in your bank. It's not about what you have at the moment here. It's about what's available to you. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I don't uh, listen, I we don't say that we have a we don't have a lot in this world. My father's got everything, mm -hmm. and he's promised to meet every need that I might have. And he does. Okay? That's why it says. In, in verse 8, it says, If we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. Food and covering. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote, and so again, to the Philippians, and he said, Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry both of having abundance and suffering need. 
I can do all things through Christ, through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 11 to 13. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a, yeah, it's a secret. It's a mystery. <laughs> but you can learn, and you have to learn to be content. Yes. Where do you learn? From the word of God. Amen. From the voice of the Holy Ghost. From with the teaching of Jesus Christ and those he inspired. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to be content. Because everything in the world is trying to make you Just discontent. It's the truth. Yes, it is. We are living in a world that is filled with absolute propaganda attempting to draw you away and draw you away into discontentment by making promises to you that it cannot keep. But God cannot lie. Lord, I'm yours for all time And I'll give you anything that I ever thought was mine I will follow your way rest of my days Lord my life is in your hands forevermore Lord I'm yours I am yours You're the potter I'm the clay Lord have your way Lord I'm yours I am yours Like a master craftsman works Lord, have your way.